Yeah, so the first two events, uh, they're gravity vehicle and bridge building. And they're really challenging. And why? Because the competition here is very intense. The top five teams make literally perfect devices. So to get a medal or anywhere close, your device has to be even better than perfect. And we'll see <laughs> how perfect it has to be. But you, in essence, you need an extraordinarily high accuracy to win here. And so let's start with gravity vehicle. Basically, the point of this event is to build a car on wheels that rolls down a ramp. So right here. And it can't be propelled by anything except for its own gravitational energy. So it can't have motors, no batteries, just rolling down the hill. And the, the salt here is that it needs to stop at a very specific line marking. So there's a target distance that it needs to travel in the shortest amount of time. And this target distance is somewhere between nine to 12 meters away from the ramp where you launch your vehicle. So it will, this is the top view of the track floor. Your cart will roll down from here and travel along, along. And then there are increments at which at any one of these increments, the event supervisors can choose to say, okay, your vehicle must stop here. So you have to fine tune and adjust this vehicle to stop at that distance and then roll it down and hope it stops right where you expect it to. And that's really a tall order because those are five centimeter increments. And what's more is that the winning teams typically have an accuracy of 10 millimeters. So they're only one centimeter off from the target point. Just think about it. That's a one part in a thousand error. What's more is that uh, these teams also have a very fast vehicle. They reach this point just barely in five seconds. The th theoretical maximum uh, you can minimum time to do this is about three and a half seconds. So they're very close to this perfect. So they've reduced friction, air drag, and et cetera, and it's very fast. And I guess if you, we can now take a look at the how this event looks like a bit more detail with this video from the Science Olympiad YouTube channel. So uh, enjoy. Oh dear, I pressed it. This is the gravity car competition, so this is for high schoolers. And the bottom line is they all build cars that have two runs down the track. And the idea is to go as fast as they can and to get as close to the finish line as they can. And they're judged on both speed and accuracy. So it's between five and 10 meters. At nationals, it's uh, one centimeter increments that we can specify. So here we've specified uh, 9.16 meters. Well, some of the better teams, you can tell, are very prepared and they've done multiple practice runs. I think that always shows that preparation is the key to success. So some of the teams also have um, scopes, like rifle scopes, to line up their, their ramps at the start. And the ones that have had those scopes have been more accurate in the end. It's an event where you can really see the students who have worked the hardest, who have practiced the most, who understand their vehicle the most. It really, they really shine. It really comes out in their knowledge of the event, and knowledge of their vehicle, and just you know when things happen that you know, well that you know, don't go to plan. You know, they they can quickly adapt. They can figure out you know can overcome those hurdles and still make you know a very good stand. We've got 
cars of every shape and size and different sizes and designs for ramps. And so far, um, the closest one is eight millimeters from the end point over a distance of um, probably 60 feet. <laughs> So the most common braking mechanism is something called a wing nut brake. So the idea is you have a wing nut that slides along the threaded axle and then eventually locks the axle. So the way that you would do that, the way that you would uh, set your vehicle up then is to spin the wheel in the opposite direction, the same distance that you need to go. And they can come up with different curves to account for skid if their car is going fast enough that skid's an issue. Oh, this has been a great event for both the, the students participating and for us um, judges and, and volunteers. I mean, it, we get as much out of this as, as certainly they do. And it's, to see the enthusiasm here today has been wonderful. One, no more. Yeah, I wish we could also have a team picnic in the long, not too distant future. Well. So now that you've understood what a gravity vehicle looks like, let's examine more closely what it takes to make a competitive vehicle possible. Throughout the world today. So this is an anatomy of a gravity vehicle right here. Um, and what I wanted to showcase here is several parts that are important and just in, in explain all of the intentional engineering choices that went behind making this very beautiful and high-performing vehicle work. So you'll begin here with the dowel. This is a sort of stick. It's an official measuring point from where the event supervisors will measure the distance to the target point. And you'll see this dowel being used in several places. So it's just an official marker of sorts, but it's a requirement. If you don't have one, you'll be disqualified. Uh, next, I guess you can look at these nice wheels, I guess. Um, they look really well, and perhaps you've seen in the video, there were some CD wheels, and oh, they aren't actually quite good because CD wheels are, CDs by themselves are flimsy. There's really not much traction between a CD and the gym floor. So when it's time to come to a stop, those CDs will actually skid. They will slide like an ice cube that was on a floor. So next, I guess, is this. This frame is made out of aluminum and 3D printed plastic parts. So that's quite a combination. A lot of people use wood, but uh, aluminum has a bunch of advantages over wood. It's light and durable, and you can machine or drill holes and cut into this very precisely. So that means you can make sure it's very, very straight angles. And the 3D printed plastic parts, they save weight. They allow you to make a custom part really without drilling holes. And that's really kind of, you'll need a lot of heavy duty equipment like a lathe, a mill, a drill press. So if you have a 3D printer, you can go right ahead, save yourself a little bit of weight and make complex looking shapes very easily. Just like look at this dowel holder right here. It's going to be difficult to make that out of metal and wood especially, but plastic, no problem. So now let's take a look at the detail to the right. And this you've heard is the wing nut breaking mechanism. So essentially the wing nut, it pushes against it. Once it touches these two or plastic pieces, it will come to a stop. It will be prevented from rotating any further, and that in turn prevents the axle from rotating further, which makes the car slow down. But what if you stop the car too suddenly? What happens is that your car will break so suddenly it starts skidding. And to overcome this, the person here, they had an idea to add a spring. So that way, the spring exerts some sort of pushing force against the wing nut gradually over time, which slows the vehicle down before it comes to a full stop. That's a really genius solution right there. And it only comes after you've experimented and seen 
the problems that arise. And I guess we can look at the detail to the left also. So you, can, you see here, there's a very heavy, well, this is block. It's actually a very heavy block. And what it does is it stores energy um, or it stores inertia, inertia. So what happens is you attach the car onto the ramp and this block is supposed to be at the very top of the car so that when it rolls down, it will have a lot of uh, inertia and potential energy to roll fast. And if you didn't have that block, it will roll a bit slower. So that's the competitive edge right there. And I guess we can move on to the ramp. So the ramp is also not just a piece of wood like this. It's curved, has a special curve shape called a brachistochrone, which allows the car to travel down as fast as possible. And then you can look here, there are little adjustment markings. So the person here who made this ramp had little tick marks to know how high up to tie the car based on the target distance. And also there are these white tape markings and that's to make sure that the car will roll straight and not to the side. Otherwise, they'll be completely off target. And finally, right here, there's supposed to be a lock and release mechanism. That's also uh, gives a lot of students some pain in designing, but if you come to the the next level of workshops after this, we will teach you all about locking and release mechanisms. Now, I guess I'd like to ask you a question. So you see this ramp here. Would, would you have any ideas what is wrong with this ramp? So it's just, I, will, I guess if anyone would like to type something in the chat, I'll wait for a bit less than a minute and see what comes up. Yes, I see. So it will be slow at the beginning because it gains a, a, a kinetic energy gradually. That's correct. That's a good point. So, um, and then when it hits the ground, it will, there, it will not be smooth. There will be energy loss and corrosion. Oh, genius. That's, that, that's um, uh, exactly. So that bump that it will encounter right here uh, will be very noticeable. And in fact, the car could actually go off course. It could hit the bump and then go sideways or so that's a big problem yeah sharp angle at the bottom and not enough potential energy yes i think this team didn't utilize the full meter uh, of height available to them but i'm not sure yes um yes okay good so i guess i'll stop to asking before um i'll stop taking answers back because we have lots more things to cover but good I see you, you're getting the grasp of this. You have to make everything perfect. You can't just have this slap, slapstick piece of wood plank and I hope it works good. No. Well, yeah. So I wanted to kind of share my enthusiasm for this event. And I, I got you some pictures of cars. <laughs> and just think of your favorite car, like, I don't know, this BMW or a Tesla. And, and imagine just how many intentional engineering decisions were made when designing these. And I mean, it looks kind of simplistic and slick on the outside, but take a look inside under the hood and there's just such so much stuff going on. And you can see all of these complicated looking things and they're not frills, they're not bells and whistles. They're critical parts to make the car function and making sure that all of this works as a system and all of this works as best as it possibly can is a very big challenge that engineers do. And it's a big achievement in humanity because after all, we build and sell 80 million cars every year worldwide. So just this event called Gravity Vehicle uh, helps us appreciate the challenges that go into these real life problems. And who knows, maybe you'll be designing cars in the not too distant future.